All right, so problem number one. We have a 70 kilogram college student grabs onto a rope swing attached to a tree. At the highest point, the swing is 3.5 meters above the lake. The student lets go of the rope when he is 1.2 meters above the lake. How fast is it going to go? So what type of energy do we start with up here? Potential. Potential. And down here we have what? Kinetic. Are we off the ground? Yes. So there is also potential. But when two things have potential, what you could do instead is we can cancel this potential out. And what do we do for the height here? Subtract. We're going to use the change in height. So our shortcut here is number one. V is equal to the square root of 2G delta H, where delta H is 3.5 minus 1.2. And then we solve from there. Go ahead and solve. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and solve for the velocity. Make sure you're getting the same number as me. Okay. A lot of the questions on the test are like that, or like this, whether it's the multiple choice in the beginning, or there's a couple problems where it's we're identifying two types of energy. It goes from kinetic to potential. We set those two equal. We solve for the thing. Okay, Just over and over again what we tend to do. Uh, number two. What did I do wrong? Uh, here, you would do square root of 2 times 10 times 2.3. Mm -hmm. Number two. I'll try and keep changing colors here. Number two. We've got Robin Hood draws back his longbow and stores 70 joules of elastic potential energy. If it says elastic potential, that's really the same thing as spring potential. How fast will a 31 gram arrow have as it leaves the bow? How fast? That means we need velocity, but what type of energy is it? Kinetic. So we've got, where's that kinetic coming from? It's coming from the spring. So US equals K. Okay, US equals K. We got one half KX squared equals one half mv squared. How can we simplify this? One halves cancel. What are we solving for? V. I'm doing way too much extra work though, aren't I? Yeah, what do we know? Yeah, we don't have kx, we already know 70. So we can just do 70 equals one half mv squared and solve it that way. Okay, if it gave you kx, then you do that. I jumped the gun. So we're going to get 140 equals m is 0 0.031. We'll make sure it's in kilograms times v squared. And I get 67.2 meters per second. It's pretty fast. Yeah, I multiplied this two up to get 140, and then I plugged in 0 0.031. Yep. Number three, we got a 500 kilogram boulder slides down a hill that is 11.1 or 11.2 meters high. It arrives at the bottom of the hill at a speed of 8.6 meters per second. How much energy is dissipated as heat? So, what type of energy does it start with? Uh, Landon, go in the hall. Go in the hall. What type do we start with? Potential. What do you finish with? Kinetic. Kinetic. You slide down a bit. Yeah. Okay. 
Anytime we have how much energy is dissipated, what does that tell you we're going to do with our energies? Subtract. We're going to subtract. We're able to solve for both of them. We're going to subtract. That difference is the energy that we lost. Go ahead and do that. We do MGH at the top, you should get 56,000. Kinetics, one half MD squared, should come out to 37,500 and, no, 18,490. Then we just subtract. That should come out to 37,510 joules of energy. That's how much was lost, because it's going slower than it normally would have. Questions there? Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay. Yeah, we start with potential. We finish with kinetic. If energy was totally conserved, it, and I shouldn't say totally conserved. What's energy always? is conserved. Energy is always conserved. It's just that we lost some to heat. It's not mechanical anymore. Wait, so why is How much energy is dissipated? Yeah, dissipated is heat is just whatever. Oh. We get how much we start with, how much we finish with, and then we subtract the two. That difference is this 37510 It's like it's saying, hey, I start with $56,000, and then I ended with $18,490. How much money did I lose? It's a lot of money. Okay. Number four. Car is driving at 36 meters per second on top of a cliff. If the car drives full speed off the cliff and hits the ground at 62 meters per second, how high was the cliff? We've got a cliff. We've got a car. I don't recommend this. What type of energy do we have at the top? Potential and kinetic because it's moving and it's off the ground. When it lands, it's going to have just kinetic because now there's no height. So you're going to say K plus UG equals K. One half MB squared. You can call it D1 squared plus MGH. Oh, yeah. My bad. MV2 squared. Okay. Go ahead and try and solve. Oh, we don't know mass, but what happens? They cancel. Wow. Yeah. If not all of them had them, then we couldn't cancel it. But since all of them do, we can cancel. Just make sure you're plugging the right Vs in the right spot. So this is before. So it's driving off at 36. So this one's the 36. This one's the 62. And you're solving for the A. I want to give you all a little time to try it before I put the answer up here.
I get 127.4 meters. Oh. Yeah, so what I did, I went ahead and plugged my 36 in here. So 36 squared over 2, 62 squared over 2. I subtracted this number from here. That gave me 1,274. And then I divided by 10. So that's how I did my algebra. So it, it's much easier to plug it in like this, change this to a number, change this to a number, subtract them, and then divide by what, whatever's in front of H. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Now, again, on the test, make sure we're showing our work. So like, if you have nothing and a wrong answer, that's a minus five or minus 10, whatever the question's worth. If I can see, oh, hey, you had this set up right here, you missed this, that's a minus two, okay? Big, big difference on a test. Uh, let's see, five. 50 kilogram box is sliding across a rough surface. The friction exerts a constant force of 250 newtons on the box while it moves 1.5 meters before stopping. How much work did the friction do on the box? Well, we want. Huh? Yeah. Number four. How do we get work? What's work equal to? Power. Force times distance. Power is work over time. Yeah. So we're doing W, w equals FD here. Probably ask power in a minute. So we're just going to take force times distance. Uh, what's our force? 250 newtons. What's our distance? Ah, well, that's pretty easy. What's the uh, unit for work? Joules. Joules, because work is a change in energy. We're giving it energy. So we get 375 joules of energy for part A. Part B wants to know, how fast was the box moving before the friction stopped it? So what this is saying is, what type of energy did it start with if it's moving? Kinetic. kinetic. And that kinetic work was done to bring it to a stop. Those two things have to be equal. We don't have to say 1 half mv squared equals fd because we already know this is 375. So we've got 1 half mv squared equals 375. We wanted kinetic. Kinetic's 1 half mv squared, so we plug that in there. Go ahead, solve. And you should come out with velocity is 3.87 meters per second. Yeah, how do you do that? This one? Yeah. I multiply by 2, I divide by the mass, which is 50, and then I square root it. So I did. V was the square root of 2 times 375 over 50. And then go try part C, where we know power is work over time. Do it right, you should get 288.5 W watts. We're taking our work over that 1.5, which is just 375. We already got that number. And we divided by the time, which was 1.3. So 375 
over 1.3 should give us 288.5 watts. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, it's okay. It, well, we already did it. So we know if the box slid 1.5 meters, that's what it already did. And it took that force to do it. You could do F times D will get you your work, which is, we just had already done that step. So if I, if I had asked part C without asking part A, you'd still have to do part A. We just had already done that. Uh, number six. Let's see. Bungee cord. We've got a 60 kilogram man stands on top of a 30 meter tall bridge connected to a 5 meter long bungee cord. The bungee cord has a spring constant of 26 newtons per meter. He jumps off the bridge. How fast is the man falling when he is 10 meters below the bridge? If the cord only stretches 19 meters, how much energy was lost as heat? Let me do that on this side. Okay. So man, bungee cord on top of a bridge. Okay. What type of energy do we have here? Potential. Potential. Okay. And he's above, I don't know, water, something. Doesn't matter. He shouldn't hit the bottom. Okay. And we want to know how fast is he going when he's 10 meters below the bridge. So how long is the bungee cord? So will it stretch when he's 10 meters below? Yes, it will have been stretched. That's what you have to ask. If it wasn't, then it would just be kinetic to potential. But here, because it's stretched, we've got it has potential because it's above the water. It has kinetic because he's in motion, and it has spring potential because it's been stretched. Whenever you have these two potentials, when you have two gravitational potential, two UGs, what can we do? Not cancel, but we can cancel this one out and make sure we use delta H. So we're going to take the difference in the height. So how much did the height change by? 10. So that delta H is going to be 10 for this. Now we can set it up and it's a little easier. So we can say UG equals K plus US. Then we plug in MGH equals one half mv squared plus one half kx squared. And let's just list everything that we know in the problem. Okay. Yeah, so we got mass is 60. Good. Uh, yeah, what, what's our height going to be? 10, because that's how much it changed by from this part to this part, okay? Um, five meter long bungee cord, what do we use that for? X, and how do we get X? We subtract, it's stretched to 10, it's original was five, so we get five meters, good. 26 newtons per meter, that's our little k. And that's everything we know. We want to solve for velocity. So we're going to just plug in everything we know. We're going to say m 60 times 10. I'm just going to add a 0 times 10. So another, zero. another 0. 1 half times 60. 30. 30 v squared. Plus 1 half of 26. 13, and x is 5 squared. And then it's algebra. So I'm going to take 13 times 5 squared, 
that's 325. I'm going to subtract it from the other side. Six thousand minus that gives me five thousand six hundred seventy-five equals thirty v squared. What next? Divide by thirty. Divide by thirty. And then square root the answer. And I get thirteen point seven five meters per second. Part B, if the cord only stretches 19 meters. Okay, so what does that mean? That means when he jumps, it stretches to 19 and he stops moving there. I don't know what I did to this guy. It's a big arm, I guess. But now he looks like a bird. Whatever. He's got wings. Red Bull. So anyway, here we have what type of energy? Spring. We're still in the air, but again, we use that difference in height. So now we're going to set it as UG equals US. We don't have kinetic because he stretched as far as he can. He's not going to continue moving anymore. So we're going to set it up like that. Um, when it says... If the cord stretches 19 meters, so let me clarify. That means it's been stretched by 19. So 19 is your X for this problem. So if it's been stretched 19, what's the original length of the cord? Five. So how far below the bridge is he? 24 meters. So it's a little backwards from how we normally do that. So our height is 24 meters and our K still 26 and there's one thing that I messed up okay. let's read it again see if anybody can catch it if the cord only stretches to 19 meters how much energy was lost as heat what does this lost as heat mean? It's not equal. That means there's some thermal here. So you can write it as like E thermal. Or you could write it as there's work done by heat. It doesn't matter. But there's this piece here that we're missing. Does that make sense? Because those energies are not going to be totally balanced out. So we're really taking our UG. We're taking our US and we're going to subtract it. So we're going to do MGH minus one half KX squared ten times what was the mass? Sixty times height was twenty four. And we're going to subtract one half of twenty six is thirteen times 19 squared nine thousand seven hundred and seven joules of energy was lost The most important part in all these problems is just identifying what energy do we start with, what do we finish with, and set them equal. It's really easy to forget stuff when you get going on. Okay, it's easy to forget, hey, we got some thermal here. So it's just getting some reps in now, just doing a bunch of different problems. Um, what I'll tell you is on the test, none of them are going to be exactly like these scenarios. Like, 
Well, it's going to be pretty close. We're going from one type to another and setting them equal. That's all the test is. Um, so let's continue. Let's see. Uh, Twelve. Number seven, 12,000 kilogram helicopter takes off from the top of a 60 meter tall building, rises up 2,500 meters. How much work is required by the engine to achieve this? So what you want to remember here for number seven is that work is equal to a change in energy. What type of energy does a helicopter have? It's got potential. So it's got potential here, and then it flies up way higher, and it's still got potential. But what happened? It's got way more up here. So all we have to do is subtract, or we can just use our UG equals MG, and let's just plug in delta H, how much the height changed. So just do it at once. So we're going to take 12,000. The mass of the helicopter? Oh. Mass of the helicopter. I thought, yeah. I thought you were doing the height. Yeah. You're good. Times 10 times, and what do we do for the height? You went from 60 to 2,500. So we're going to subtract them. 2,440. That's it. Yep. I keep forgetting to move my paper down. Please let me know. Um, I took the 2,500 2, meters and I subtracted the 60 from it because it's how much the height changed. Otherwise, we'd have to do MGH twice and subtract them, and it still works out the same way. So that delta H just saves us a bunch of time. And that's a really big number, 2928000000. Two hundred ninety-two million eight hundred thousand joules of energy. That's a lot. That's a lot. But it's a really heavy object, really high in the air. That's a lot of pages in the Bible. Two hundred million joules. Yeah. Oh my God. That was good. Okay. Seven, how many watts of power is required to achieve this if it takes a helicopter 15 minutes to get up there? How do we get power? So we just got to divide by time. Are we dividing by 15? No, we're by 15 times 60. 15 times 60 is 900 seconds. So we just divide our answer by 900. And we still get a really big number. 325,333 watts. Power is measured in W. Leave it up there for a second. Uh, number eight, cool if I skip it? Just standard spring problem. Let's get to some of the other stuff here. Um, let's see. Uh, number nine. 30 kilogram boy jumps off a five meter high platform onto a blob below. Assuming no air resistance, how fast is he going when he hits the blob below? Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Flop? Okay, I'll show you a video tomorrow. Remind me. That's the giant inflatable thing. Somebody's sitting on, you get yeah. one or two people jump up really high. It's really transfer cool. energy. Oh, go really far. Yeah. So I'll show you a good video tomorrow. All we're doing is potential energy to kinetic. So real quick, I can just say, oh, oh hey, that's going to be V is square root of 2G delta H or 20 times, square root of 20 times 5. I get 10 meters per second. Okay? Just 10? Just 10. It's just a five meter high platform. Now, B, in reality, air resistance will slow his descent and cause him to lose 10% of his energy on the way down. How fast is he actually going when he hits the blob below? Okay? 
Okay, when you have you lose 10% of your energy, we have to solve this in terms of energy. So we're gonna get our energy first. We start with potential energy, which is MGH. So our mass is 30 times 10 is zero times height of five. one thousand five hundred joules of energy we lost or we lose ten percent of that so how much remains you can subtract ten percent and you can say hey I'm gonna take fifteen hundred times ninety percent which is in a calculator what do we do 0.9 that's our energy so now we're gonna get 13,500 <laughs> joules is equal to our kinetic energy one half mv squared and now you can solve for the velocity. Okay, you cannot just take 10% off this number. That's not how it's going to work. Okay, you have to do it this way, 10% off the energy, solve for energy, take 10% of that, then we're solving for B. So you're going to get 2 times 1350 over the mass was 30 square root. Anybody have questions? Yeah. Um, so why did we add in the gravity? So we started with potential energy, right? So I his mass was 30 times 10 was 300 times 5. So I, I factored yeah. it. And then we get nine point, about 9.5. Ten percent of ten would have been one. That would have been nine. Those, those are not the same thing. So you have to take ten percent of the energy, then solve. Should I leave that up here for a second? Okay. okay. Um, this problem we did last week, really important. Ball bounces. Just understand when the ball is on the way down, before it bounces, so at what velocity does the ball initially hit the ground? That's this part, because it starts with the UG, and then it turns into K. It hits the ground, and it loses energy. Then it bounces back up, so it's got K again, and it goes up to UG. It just doesn't go as tall or as high. So this is, when does it leave after bouncing? So this means you use the 2 meters for this one, and you use 1.2 for this one. How much energy is lost? You find your energy at both, both heights. I would use MGH, so this number, this number, subtract it. Okay, I want to get to this. Uh, number 11, really, really important here. If a ball is on top of a 45 meter tall cliff, if it rolls off with six meters per second, what is the speed of the ball when it hits the ground? What type of energy are we starting with? Kinetic. Ball is here, rolls off, but it's also up in the air, isn't it? So it's also got potential. And then just before the, it hits the ground, it's kinetic. Yes, sir? Why is it up in the air if it's touching the floor of the cliff? Be, because it's going to go lower than the cliff. Okay. So we're saying we start on top of the cliff, we're ending at the bottom of the cliff. So that's the difference. So we got potential because it's going to fall, but it's also moving here. So we're going to set K plus UG equal to K. One half, we know the M's are going to cancel because we've done this today. V1 squared plus GH equals one half V2 squared. We know it rolls off at 6, so we're going to plug in 1 half, 6 squared, plus 10 times 45 is 450, equals 1 half V2 squared. And we can solve. Times 2, square root. Thirty thousand, or sorry, thirty point six meters per second, not thirty thousand. Okay. 
Now, what's really important here, B, if instead the ball is launched at 45 degree angle from the top of the cliff at six meters per second, what does this be the ball when it hits the ground below? What changes? The angle, right? So, I mean, we could do, we could solve a projectile and figure out how far it lands. That's not what the question is asking. It just wants to know what speed, right? What type of energy does it start with if it's thrown at an angle instead? Is it still in the air? Is it still moving? Did anything change? Not in terms of energy. You're still starting with the same kinetic, same potential. So it's the same exact answer. It doesn't matter if you throw it up, throw it over, or throw it downwards. It's all the same mathematically. All your answers here are going to be 30.6. There's some multiple choice questions that's going to ask you the difference. So which one's going to, so we've got one thrown horizontally, one thrown up in the air, and one thrown downwards. Which one would hit the ground first? Then? In the up. But they all hit the ground at the same speed? All at the same speed. That's why I'm trying to trick those smokes. Not trying to trick, that's why I'm telling you now. If we look at it in terms of energy, it, like the angle that they hit at is going to be different. So the angle that it hits the ground would be different. But the energy would be the same. In terms of like energy, like chucking a ball straight down is the same as chucking a ball like up the side at the same speed. Yeah, as long as you have the, as long as you throw it with the same initial speed, it doesn't matter, matter which way you do it. That's why we're trying to throw something as far as possible. Then the angle affects how far it will go. But it's not affecting how much energy you gave it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 12. I, I want to do this one real quick. Uh, we got spring force. We want to determine K. So we stretch out a rubber band. This is exactly on the test. Star this. Exactly on the test. I give you a different graph. How do we get K when we got FS and X? FS is equal to KX. Rise over run. So we're going to get K is FS over X. You cannot when we have a best fit line, you cannot use these dots. Okay, what you have to do, I know your graph looks different, that's why I'm doing it in here. Yep, it didn't print as well. Okay, this is really, really important, y'all. Do not use these points. You have to use a point on the graph that the best fit line goes through. So you need to pick something where it goes exactly through. So like here on mine, I hope you all can see that. You see how that goes exactly through that crosshair? I'm going to pick a point like that. And then I'm going to pick another point that also goes through, I don't know, one that looks like it goes through exactly like this one. Okay? On the test, I need you to circle which two points you are using. You cannot use these dots because these dots are not on the best fit line. Does that make sense? Because if I did these two points, that slope there is different from the slope that we actually calculated. So you need to pick two points on here. Um, so we're going to do FS is going to be 16. Wait, no, that is did go up there? Uh, 17 minus 7 over uh, 27 minus 11. I'm sorry. Can you all see that okay? So again, on the test, it'll be just like this. I'll give you a graph with some dots. You are picking two points on the line, not the dots. Okay? Like super important. Two points online, not dots. So we should get 10 over 16. This would have a spring constant of 0 0.625 newtons per meter. Okay? How much force would need it? would be needed to stretch the band 20 meters. You go to 20. 
and you look and say, okay, that's about 12 meters. Okay, so you're just finding the intercept on the line. Questions there? Okay. And just get as close to a whole number as, it, as you can on there. That is the review. That's exactly what's going to be on the test.